In this video, we'll go over the basics of setting up a plastic part mold filling analysis inside SOLIDWORKS Plastics. This will involve creating a new study in SOLIDWORKS Plastics, assigning a polymer from the material database, defining an injection location on where the plastic will be injected into the part, creating a mesh, and then solving and interpreting the results. To get started setting up a plastics analysis, we'll want to be in the SOLIDWORKS part environment. And we'll want to have a body that represents the part that we want to mold, as well as either a point or a sketch point, like this sketch here, where we want to specify our gate or injection location. Then I'll need to load the SOLIDWORKS plastics add-in either under the SOLIDWORKS add-ins tab and choosing SOLIDWORKS plastics or under the options pull down menu add-ins and then choosing the checkbox for SOLIDWORKS plastics. This will load an additional tab on the command manager with the plastics commands. Note that for the 2021 version I'm showing here, the SOLIDWORKS Plastics user interface has been restructured to more closely match the other SOLIDWORKS simulation tools. So here we'll choose to create a new study. I can leave all these settings at their defaults with the exception of analysis procedure, which is choosing my mesh type. And we can choose solid mesh, which is generally more accurate or shell mesh, which is more appropriate for a first pass analysis. For this tutorial, I'll choose shell, but in a future video, we'll discuss these differences in more detail. Click the check mark to create the study. And the first thing I need to do is specify my polymer. So where I have injection unit one, I'm gonna right click and go into the settings and click on Material to browse my material database. We can see I have a user-defined database and the default database that's included with SOLIDWORKS Plastics, where we can sort by family of material or by company or brand. You'll see most of the major manufacturers of polymers included in here. I'm gonna go back to family and just choose a generic material for ABS polycarbonate blend under ABS PC. These viscosity and PVT curves represent the bulk of the rheological or flow data for the polymer. The polymer material properties pane is also useful here we can see things like the recommended melt and mold temperatures for the polymer, which will automatically populate once we click OK into the fill settings on the left. And of course, you can create your own materials in the user-defined database. I'll click OK to accept this. And there are additional properties that can be adjusted for the fill parameters, such as fill time and injection pressure limit. I'm just going to click the check mark to accept these defaults and move on to my boundary conditions where I'll specify my injection location or gate location. Since we don't have the runner system modeled here, we'll be choosing this simplified representation to directly inject the material into the sketch point. We'll click the check mark. Another thing we can specify, if you're interested in tracking it, is by right-clicking boundary conditions and choosing clamp force. This will specify and track the clamp force required to mold this part. This is important for choosing the size of a machine that the part may be moldable on. And you'll see it typically rated in tons. We'll click the check mark. 
The last task we need to do is to create the mesh. So I'll right click on my shell mesh and choose create mesh. We have a uniform or curvature based mesher. I'm going to create the mesh with the uniform mesher, but also show on the screen here a screenshot comparing results from uniform and curvature based. Curvature based will automatically put refinement into areas of curvature. For this tutorial, I'll be using the uniform mesh with the default settings. If you decided you did need additional refinement in any particular area, you could accomplish that by using an advanced mesh control, which allows choosing local faces or edges and setting a particular mesh size on those. For now though, I'll just click the check mark to continue on. And then we should be ready to run our analysis by right clicking on the flow option, which is just another way of saying the filling portion of the molding process. So I'll right click and run flow. This is going to pop up the analysis manager and I'll also be able to see partial results as they become available. Every 10% that the model fills will get a graphical update on the screen. A quick note about this analysis manager is that if you ever were to minimize it, it can seem like it disappears. It's actually going to my Windows taskbar. So you may need to click show hidden icons to be able to open the analysis manager again. If you don't need to be seeing the partial results, it will run slightly quicker if you disable that display partial results option. It can be useful though, because you might be able to catch obvious problems in the part before the analysis is complete. Once it is complete, the analysis manager will automatically close and we can interpret our results. Now that we're back in the software, we're presented with our full result plots as well as the results advisor, which changes based on the plot type that we have selected. It's basically like a help file that will explain the different available result plots. The yellow light here indicates that the part can be filled under the injection pressure limit, but it's getting close to the upper end of it, requiring over 80% of the injection pressure. On my fill time plot, if I scroll down, I can animate. For a more controlled ability to go through, I can click and drag the max slider to see specific moments in the fill, or click through step by step. Then when I'm done, click the left icon to reset the plot to maximum. I also like to view velocity vector at end of fill, which shows us the polymer orientation. We can also see predictors for weld lines, where we have two flow fronts that are converging and could result in a possible visible weld or knit line on the part, as well as air traps which are pockets of air that will need to be vented from the mold. There's many more plot types, including estimates at cooling time, ease of fill, and sink mark prediction. Now, this part doesn't have many obvious problems, but I'll plan to follow up in a separate video later on with some common molding defects that we can catch easily using SOLIDWORKS plastics. I'll click the check mark to get out of this results view. And 
Under the results here, we can also double click on summary and report. If we go to the flow tab, this is where I can see the clamp force that's required, just under 50 tons. This would get multiplied if we had multi-cavity molds. Finally, to analyze geometry variations or maybe different polymers, we could click the duplicate study option. This will create a new SOLIDWORKS configuration. I'll call this one nylon. Click OK. And it'll copy the plastic study over. So all I should need to do is in the new configuration, specify the new material, and then I could run the study and still store both sets of results. Since SOLIDWORKS configurations support changing dimensions and patterns and features, we can also analyze geometry variations like this configuration where I've made an alternate rib design. Finally, to learn more about SOLIDWORKS plastics, there are some great built-in tutorials accessible under the settings and help on the plastics command manager. This is also where you can change the unit system. I've been using SI units. Access the help files or those tutorials I'm talking about. The tutorials document is a PDF that includes many different examples, starting from relatively basic applications, working their way through more complex examples. We also offer live training courses online, which for SOLIDWORKS plastics, include a course for part design validation and mold design validation. Hopefully you found this video helpful and let us know in the comments section below what type of content you'd like to see next.